What does it take to create a theme park attraction? Or better yet, what does an art director do? You are not gonna believe this, but if you see the attraction behind me, we are actually gonna meet Theron Skies. He is the designer, the art director. Here, he was a Disney Imagineer for 20 some years. We're gonna get to meet him and hear what it takes. But in the meantime, let's go check out the Tower of Terror. Follow me. Theron Skis, I am so excited to meet you. Oh my God. First, what was your title at Disney? And then, you know, sure. what was your role? I've been on the creative side of the business for all 23 years. Wow. And that includes roles like art director, creative director. I've had a chance to do a lot of different things, which has been fun. I started as sort of this, I guess you could say more of a trades person. For film and television, I did a lot of painting, a lot of backdrop work and that kind of thing. And from that point, I kind of realized that film wasn't really delivering what I wanted. What I really wanted was to create a place. I wanted oh, to yeah. escape. I wanted to go into these environments. And when I found themed entertainment, you know, theme parks, it was just like a match made in heaven. I just was a, a really good sculptor. So I would, in film, I did big, big, you know, foam sculptures, fiberglass, oh, wow. that kind of thing. And come to find out that that translates pretty good to artificial rock work, mm. believe it or not. So I got hired at Universal Studios to do all the rocks around their big lagoon. Well, that led me to work in Paris. Back then it was Euro Disneyland. Oh, that's right, yeah. I was so honored to be able to work on Pirates of the Caribbean there. Oh, really? And my role was art directing the rock work. And then when I came back to Orlando, I started at Disney MGM Studios. Mm. Got to do some really cool things. They built Fantasmic. We changed uh, Tower of Terror multiple times. We added uh, 100 Years of Magic there. The stunt show, we did Rock and Roller Coaster. I mean, there was just a lot of different Man. attractions that kind of happened within that decade. They built so much. What was that process like to have to kind of start with a concept and then yeah. roll it out? You know, at Disney at Universal, of course you sell popcorn, of course you sell products, t-shirts, those kinds of things. But the overall commodity that you're dealing in is experience. The key is that you don't start by saying, we have this new great roller coaster technology, let's get it in our park and make it work because you know the highest, fastest, whatever is right. what's gonna get the people in the gate. Disney starts off by saying, what's the best kind of experience that would attract that particular audience? And then that leads to bunches of different concepts, different ideas. And then as you narrow that down, you then say, well, here's the experience we wanna create. That determines what ride system you use, hmm. right? And sometimes that's why a Disney or a Universal will invent a ride system that doesn't exist because it's something so proprietary hmm. that is the only thing that would deliver that ride experience. When Walt opened Disneyland in 1955, he really invented the theme park. Right, and right. He really took this idea of the emotions that we feel when we watch a movie. You know, it's okay to go on that journey with the characters in a TV or, you know, a show or a or movie you're watching. I feel sad, I feel happy, I feel joy, I'm in love, I'm angry. Those emotions connect you to the story. Hmm. So Walt said, we can do that not just in two dimensions on a screen, we can actually create that in three dimensions and people can walk into it. Hmm. That's when the theme park was kind of born. It had this really interesting effect that I think was probably unintentional, is that other businesses saw how important it was to connect a consumer with a product in an emotional way. There's so many different industries and markets now, retail, dining, entertainment, right. that understands how important it is now to make this emotional connection mm -hmm. with a consumer. I got the chance to go down into the Disney Springs area, which I know you had a huge heavy hand creatively on that. So what was it like to then transition and, and work on, you know, whether it be restaurants or that, that feeling yeah. in that area? This was brand new. You couldn't do Mickey, you couldn't do Goofy, none of the characters would work there. Right. Part of the reason is, is because if you're gonna bring in these third party brands, they were like, well, we want 
our brand to not be overwhelmed by the Disney brand. So how do we sit side by side in this comfortable way? So we really had to boil that down to, well, what's the core experience that a guest would think of as Disney? And we came up with that would be a place. And you really feel like it's detailed and it's done well. The music is well, the lighting is well. You know, all of this is done with a level of excellence that the Disney brand is known for. Sure. We really um, integrated and wove story through everything. We really knew that the Disney fans would love it. You weren't just in Disney World, you also had some time in Paris and I know some other opportunities as well. So what other yeah. projects were you doing? Well, I had the opportunity to actually go back to Paris in 2006 and expand the studio park there with one of my favorite attractions, Tower of Terror. Yeah. So we built Tower of Terror, we built Hollywood Boulevard, we had shops and dining huh. facilities, and then we had a, a really cool opportunity to move to Hong Kong and work at Hong Kong Disneyland, and I did that for four years from 2008 to 2012. That was really the first generation of Chinese to experience a Disney oh, yeah, theme sure. park. So it was amazing to be a part of helping to educate how to experience a Disney product. Mm. It was really fascinating to be a Westerner right, right, in right. that culture, learning how they perceive story and uh, experience, and then adapting your design and, and methodology to kind of be meaningful. I really feel blessed to have been able to do so many different things, but oh, yeah. apply the same process and really see that it works. Whether it's an attraction, a theme park, a hotel, rd and &E, a cruise ship, you know, the same process works in creating spaces and telling stories in all these different areas. Give me some more information about sure. what you do now. Sure, well, I started a company called the Designers Creative Studio. I'm not satisfied just doing one thing. Mm -hmm. So I teach at different universities. I run a coaching service where I help people with their career journeys. You know, I have online classes that I've created to Man. help teach people. And then I, I consult. I have different groups that I'm working with, whether it's a UI UX company, whether it's a themed you know, industry or retail. I do different types of work that way. And then um, I also speak. So go to different locations and do keynotes yeah. and workshops. And really, I just want to inspire, guide, and educate people.